Hi, this is your host Shubham Tiwari, and I welcome you to Education Plus, a show brought to you by Wonder Publish Magazine, where we bring to you the institutional perspective to the discourse around education and, more importantly, education technology. Our today's guest has over 17 years of experience uh, as an academician and is uh, efficiently and effectively spearheaded has uh, spearheaded various uh, Delhi, Delhi public schools and is currently working as director principal at Delhi Public School, Patna East. Uh, welcome, Dr. Prashant Vasudev to Wonder Publish Magazine. Thank you. Thanks, Vitan, for inviting me to this wonderful online platform. So, uh, as I just uh, told our audience that it's been 17 years, uh, you have been an academician. So, uh, can you tell us about, you know, uh, the various lessons, various nuggets of wisdom that you must have picked up through your journey about leadership, let's say. I honestly believe that a great leader is one who leads by example. First and foremost, he or she must be a great observer so that once he or she decides to go one notch higher in his or her career, he or she can make use of that 360 degree perspective, which is so very important for an academician come administrator. So unless and until you put your observation skills to good effect, you won't remain yourself motivated, which essentially means percolating the same thing down to your team members. So it's essential for a leader to stay himself or herself motivated so that the same energy rubs on to the team that he or she leads. So in my sojourn of 17 years, I have loved to explore various facets of both academic as well as administrative side of uh, uh, school education. And a person who is willing to explore new facets would definitely be on the right path to conquer new heights in life. Right, wonderful. So which role do you enjoy more, uh, being an academician or an administrator? Uh, it's a tough call because uh, I have donned that uh, hat of an academician for the yeah. best part of, I would say, uh, 13 out of 17 years in my career. Okay. And uh, approximately uh, eight to nine years of uh, administrative profile as well. Right. Both has its own challenges, its own uh, pros and cons. Right. I loved being an educator because the moment I'm into a classroom, uh, looking at the wonderful side of my children, yep. uh, seeing them uh, exhibiting great amount of zeal, enthusiasm, energy is, is next to none. I mean, that's incomparable. Right. Administrative challenges uh, are more on the professional front, wherein uh, I believe the involvement of uh, students are uh, kept to as low levels as possible. And you really need to don that hat, thinking about uh, organizational interest first yep. and accordingly exploring various facets of school administration, which uh, the board of management wants you to uh, look into and perhaps uh, polish it, go one notch higher so that everybody, each and every stakeholder has got good things to say or opine about the institution overall. Both Wonderful. has its own challenges. I have loved both. All right. So... Uh... And uh, you have also been involved in, you know, many uh, awareness programs and you are on the board of cybercrime awareness panel of Delhi police. So uh, speaking of, you know, this uh, sudden shift to online means when it comes to, you know, classrooms. So have you seen any uptick in, uh, in the crime rates because kids are, you know, exposed to internet now? So what do you think? It's a mixed bag of sorts. By and large, I would say it's a no. Okay. That's uh, because of the prime reason that when uh, educators get involved through an online platform, I believe their job is only to spread positive energy onto the students. By doing that, I really don't see any scope for any negative actions to follow. But having said that, yes, it is very much uh, important. The onus lies exclusively on, on the school to ensure that... Right kids don't deviate from the accepted norms and venture into any domain or territory which might then become a hunting ground for cyber criminals. Correct. So, you know, taking into account the ubiquity of the internet and the new privacy norms, I believe a lot of awareness has already been created among the parent fraternity, students, educators, of course, lead from the front to safeguard our children's privacy and accordingly, uh, keeping them away from fraudsters and cyber bullies. But as I said, uh, 
we we are only thriving on the hope that back home at least one of the parents given the fact that these are unprecedented times at right. least one of the parents would exercise a strict vigil on the students okay. and of course educators always do that till the time their class comes to an end so with positivity all around i don't see a, a scope for a lot of scope for negative consequences to follow yeah. nevertheless children in the age group of 15 and above yeah. they need to be counseled they need to be uh, shown the right path at all times so an educator has to come out of the comfort zone and not just remain an educator he or she needs to be a friend philosopher and guide to ensure that negative consequences do not follow wonderful and and speaking of you know the involvement of parents and educators they are evolving you know nature of their role how did you cope up i mean uh, as a as an organization uh, during this prolonged pandemic which we have seen Uh, see when you when you ensure parental patronage i believe uh, a lot of uh, things go in favor of a school primarily because then parents also echo the opinion of the school management in terms of finding a, a feasible solution to to come out of this prolonged uh, i would say unprecedented time yeah so when when parental patronage is ensured i believe uh, you know students uh, find out their own ways and means of you know doing away with a lot of anxiety and stress because these online classes keep them busy it yeah. also builds resilience in them showing them that you know threats if at all they exist they can be managed through rational well thought out preparation and action yeah. yes it's it's not something that can happen with the blink of an eye a lot of effort uh, talking about my institution a lot of effort has already gone into ensuring that parents have become partners in our progress students right. play a an active role and of course educators have always been playing a, a pivotal role by burning that midnight lamp in order to get True. the best out of our students so the, the new normal as we call it the new normal norms have to be abided by because we still don't know uh, till what time will this pandemic last accordingly the norms remain the same but we must try a level best we must not leave any stone unturned in ensuring that students get as much uh, a real environment close to what it would have been had physical classes been taking place right and speaking of uh, you know programs outside school the social programs and social initiative initiatives can you tell us about you know uh, anything uh, regarding these programs that your schools was involved with again this is something very close to my heart because when i was the founder principal at dps aurangabad i had the good fortune of introducing two concepts which was completely novel at that time and no other school in the whole of i would say central india had ever envisaged such kind of a concept the two concepts that i'm referring to happen yep. to be the introduction of a science park within the school campus okay. wow. which which involved setting up with an agency based out of chennai uh whereby we ensured that we got at least 15 to 20 uh, uh scientific gadgets installed in our school campus that can Wonderful. withstand the vagaries of climate as well you know doesn't matter whether it's extreme summer or winter or monsoon for that matter irrespective of the vagaries of climate we got those gadgets installed those are of course uh, gadgets that can be installed anywhere uh, in the school compound uh, you know comprising i would say uh 400 to 500 square meters right uh, so we got these 15 <clears throat> to 20 odd gadgets in installed which enabled the students to understand yeah. the theoretical concepts that were being taught in the class so instead of just mugging them up you know on the basis of whatever the educators would have taught them in the class i ensured that at least they had certain gadgets to 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 lay their hands on whereby yes, scientific temperament got inculcated and they understood why what and how of those scientific concepts rather than rote memorization taking place that's why i clearly system. remember in in my time when i was a student when i was taught the functioning of a nuclear reactor i just mugged up the whole thing yeah. i just knew that certain kind of energy gets produced which sets the nuclear reactor in motion it again produces some other form of energy so that's how i mugged up the concept of physics but i know that you know with the introduction of a science park i had those uh, you know uh, gadgets in place whereby students could lay hands on exposure to them 
and gain a real understanding of why those concepts are in place, what is the logic behind those things happening. So right. scientific temperament is something which I laid great, great emphasis on. Uh, a similar program was uh, called Butterfly Edufield's Initiative, which again, uh, you know, uh, involved tying up with an agency based out of uh, Hyderabad, whereby okay. they kept supplying us a lot of modules, uh, which would otherwise explain concepts which uh, normally all of us, not just the educators, but the students also would have uh, been robbed of in terms of its scientific understanding. So right. with the help of those modules, uh, you know, students uh, developed a scientific uh, and more logical understanding of certain concepts, which otherwise we just used to observe in daily life. If I have to quote an example, I clearly remember a class four child standing up in one of the uh, EVS classes and uh, posing this question to the educator, ma'am, why is it that the aircraft, whenever an aircraft takes off and lands, it appears so very smooth although there is a little bit of jerk here and there, but what is the concept behind an aircraft taking off and an aircraft landing? Now, just imagine a class four child asking this student to his so you know, EVS teacher. Yeah. So this is, this is where, you know, I believe uh, the kind of initiative that uh, I, you know, happened to introduce right. did wonders for my children, did wonders for my educators too, because uh, sure. the ultimate aim was the learning should never stop. Everyone right. should get an avenue to learn with each passing day. That was my sole objective. I'm sure, sir. And Wonderful. I take pride, and I take a lot of pride having introduced should, these two things, which yeah. still remain very close to my heart. That's wonderful, sir. And then you spoke about you know uh, being a uh, founder principal. So, uh, right. how do you you know differentiate, uh, let's say, normal principal, normal respectable principal, uh, from a founder principal? Because what are the traits of a founder principal? Again, something which is very very close to my heart because I have been a founder principal. Uh, in at least three of the daily public schools that yes. I uh, have been lucky enough to spearhead. Uh, it, it gives you a lot of contentment, more than satisfaction and uh, uh, happiness. I, I would use the, the term contentment. Why? Because right from uh, the inception of the school, yeah. uh, in terms of you know, who comes on board, uh, in, ter uh, you know, in terms of the recruitment pattern, in terms of the uniform, in terms of uh, the liaisoning that needs to be done with vendors. Correct. So all those uh, behind the scenes planning uh, has to take place before the school actually becomes operational. And you actually derive a sense of fulfillment, contentment while doing that, because you know that you, know, you are the first person to lay uh, your hands on uh, a system and you're going to lay down that system, which you hope would leave footprints on the sands of time. So when you, you are fortunate enough to uh, you know, uh, get an opportunity to to lay down a legacy of sorts. Right. I don't think there can be uh, any other you know thing in this world that can be compared to that. On the other hand, when you take over as principal of a well-established, settled educational entity, you don't have much to do in terms of these uh, things which you would have done at the inception stage because they involve greater challenges. You are, you know, in other words, I would say you are actually given a. a a ready-made platter, right. wherein using your imagination and creativity, you just have to, you know, ensure that the institution goes one notch higher. Correct. But taking baby steps, but taking baby steps is, is, is a different proposition altogether. You may falter, you may fumble, you may, you know, learn from your mistakes, right. you may commit some other kind of mistakes. Yeah. So that is where, you know, the, the challenge factor is on the higher side. And that accordingly gives you a lot of uh, fulfillment and contentment. I still remember in, in, in Aurangabad, DPS Aurangabad, I did not hesitate. I, you know, went ahead and even placed desks, chairs and tables inside the classroom Yourself. because we were, we were short of the housekeeping staff because we Wonderful. never we knew, we could never anticipate what would be an ideal number of, you know, the, the housekeeping staff that we would be requiring. So as a founder principal, I've done that also. And I don't, I really don't uh, make any human cry about it because again, that also is a part of a learning process, yeah. which which stands you in good stead as you progress with the institution. Wonderful, and and you have been you know rightly uh, felicitated uh, um, by you know various organizations. Uh, you are the youngest okay. recipient of Dr. S. Radhakrishna National Teachers Award. Uh, you are the youngest recipient again of Dr. S. Uh, Radhakrishna Samman. Uh, and there are various you know uh, foundations that have recognized your efforts. I can go on and on. Trust me. 
I have so many here. But this word youngest, you know, it's there everywhere. You're the youngest uh, vice principal and principal in the field of school education. And so what's this, uh, you know, uh, uh, obsession with being so fast uh, than other people, then, you know, so efficient, I would say. What is it that keeps you going? See, uh, to begin with, I come from a family of uh, principals. Both my parents oh, are, happen okay. to be retired principals. So this is this is a field which I have chosen purely out of my own desire, you know, out of okay. my own choice and not by force. Yeah. Nobody has, you know, thrust it on me or right. it isn't a case of, you know, uh, me not finding uh, happiness or contentment elsewhere. So, okay, let me try my luck in the field of teaching. No, certainly not. Yeah. So that is something which has come automatically to me. I clearly remember when I was in grade seven, my class teacher asked me, you know, Prashant, what would you like to become once you grow up? Without the iota of any doubt, I told her that I would not mind following the footsteps of my mother. And she was just a teacher at that time. So even my class teacher was a little stunned. She asked me, do you really want to be a teacher? I said, yes. I confidently said yes, because I'm, I'm you know, okay with the kind of life that my parents have led. And I would like to continue with the legacy. So, you know, that's something which has come naturally to me. Plus the fact that I, I believe I'm a, uh, I'm a good learner because I can learn from my peers. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, people of my same age, I can learn from elderly members, my mentors, you know, any senior citizen for that matter. I can also learn from a five-year-old kid. So for me, learning never stops. And that's perhaps the reason why earlier also I reiterated that I'm a good observer. I, I love observing people. I love exploring yeah. new ideas and concepts which allows me to perhaps, you know, uh, be on that path of research, uh, uh, you know, in an unending fashion. I also appreciate thoughts and ideas emanating from others. Hence, uh, you know, I believe that as long as one has the belief that you can stay determined to achieve great things in life and with a little bit of resilience, I guess sky is the limit. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. There's so much to, you know, unpack from your answer. Uh, but speaking about uh, you, uh, you're an author as well. So first of all, please tell us about your books. And uh, then I'll ask you about the, you know, uh, e-books and other new technological advances that are coming in education. But first about your books. Uh, immediately after my BA, you know, bef just before I commenced my teaching career, by the way, I commenced my teaching career uh, from uh, Chinmaya Vidyalaya, uh, a very, very renowned institution in New Delhi. Before I commenced my teaching career from Chinmaya Mission School, uh, I was always encouraged by my professors from Delhi School of Economics. By the way, I have done my post-graduation from Delhi School of Economics. So my professors uh, always encouraged me to get into college lecturership and you know do my PhD straight away after my master's, which I did not prefer because I was always inclined towards school education. I right. did, of course, my PhD later on. But then uh, that, that hunger for, uh, you know, uh, uh, knowledge yeah. and passing on something to my dear students, because when I was a student, I was in the top three in my school. So, you know, I was a very good student. So I always felt that, uh, you know, students needed something extra, particularly at the senior secondary level. And right. I'm referring to 11th and 12th. Yeah. Uh, I, I felt that with a little bit of extra guidance uh, coming from uh, the educators, uh, courtesy, some good written material, which yeah. I found in my time was a rarity. So I thought of giving it back to my, you know, uh, dear students. Uh, well, of course, when I when I wrote my first book and when I when it was out in the market, uh, everyone was curious to know who is this guy. And uh, you know, somehow somebody found out that I was teaching in Chinmaya Vidyalaya, and then uh, you know, it was it was a representative like you who was stunned to note that, you know, I was just 22 and my students were 18. So there was hardly a four year age gap, you know, between us. <laughs> Nevertheless, I, I had been an author by that time. Right. You know, ever since my first edition came out, uh, this was way back, I guess, in 2004. Uh, yeah. You know, there was no there was no looking back. Uh, the same professors uh, kept on egging me to, uh, you know, uh, write further books. And that's exactly what I've done. Uh, of course, with with changing times, the yeah. pattern of CBSC question paper has changed uh, in a subject like business studies, which is very close to my heart. You will find more of case study based questions these days. So that's the reason why in 2016, I decided to 
come up with an exclusive book uh, for case studies alone right. and that also has done wonders in the market it is called bullseye you know in business studies for right. both grade 11 and grade 12 completely case study based now coming back to e books i would say as long as there is uh, you know quality content available yeah. uh, i really don't differentiate between conventional uh, you know access to books Correct. and e books but then but then you you have to take into account the wider population when we talk about tier 3 tier 4 and you know rural areas tier 3 tier 4 cities and rural areas of Correct. our country Small town, yeah. uh, technology yeah. is is still you know a, a little away in terms of yeah, in a very nascent stage still. correct correct yeah absolutely so given the fact that technological aids are yet to make its presence felt in those areas uh, i believe you know it's certainly a step in the right direction and we are not far away when technology would create its impact uh, you know all over the country uh you know a simple conclusion to this would be you know heavy school bags have always been a major concern since right. time immemorial as we say Correct. which isn't the case with ebooks they yep. also assure you uh, you know access any time with with the you know uh, click of a mouse yep. of course you need a good internet connection and all those things but yes that's certainly something which uh, eases the load both on the students as well as the parents correct correct and and having having good quality ebooks is yeah. always welcome you know in any educational institution provided Correct. provided you only add to your you know bank of right. books can One you should can never you... be content with yeah. the stock available you should always update Keep on your updating. collection so that yeah any kind of you know books can be accessed any time by any student correct can you can you tell us what sort of you know uh, educational technical you know aids uh, you have been using at your school we have we have always access to you know various uh, uh links that have been i am i am in a group called uh, you know uh, panchatantra education uh, foundation okay you know that that group keeps forwarding uh, a lot of uh, free access materials which not just the educators but the students also have so that that has become a humongous thing in my school right. because that's that's virtually a uh, you know an encyclopedia of sorts Uh, where in any kind of access to any kind of books related to science ict social studies the languages uh, the the foreign languages you know sanskrit all those a, any kind of you know thing can be accessed over there Correct. so that has kind of you know ignited a lot of passion amongst my educators as well as students then we also have tied up with extra marks they right. also have a, a lot of content you know that they keep uh, providing us with uh i also have access to you know the the uh, bank of uh, uh you know resources that my fellow principals you know are more than happy to share with me so Correct. as i said when, when you collaborate with you know the education fraternity in general right. uh, you know having a, a vast pool of resource i don't think is is going to be a casualty at any given point of time Correct. it's it's all about how good your networking is right. and i frankly speaking i've used my networking skills to to you know uh, get the best out of what my students can lay their hands on that's wonderful sir that's amazing and speaking of your students uh, you must be missing them uh, because they're not uh, attending their classes in person so again how do you hope to rekindle that spirit of you know uh, you know that community in students and particularly in the younger ones because uh let's say the ones who are waiting to get into schools but now their you know admission process has got delayed so how do you uh, hope to rekindle this see uh first and foremost we need to reflect on our thoughts and feelings around you know what is going to be the new normal like because unless and until you know we abide by the new normal correct even even students would always you know keep missing the school and vice versa so you know uh, we need to understand that understanding their behavior the students behavior in itself is a form of communication which gets mm, reflected in say uh, you know if i have to give you a small example the daily morning assemblies that we conduct online right. wherein i make myself available uh, you know i get an opportunity to interact with students and i come across students who at times are not very confident of speaking yeah. because you know uh, in her inherently he or she might not be a good orator so yeah. then you know i identify such students and i'm more than happy to lend my helping hand to such students although i don't you know come from an english background uh, you know i i don't have an mba in english literature degree with me but then you know i i back my linguistic skills i don't mind reaching out to the students directly 
yeah or else i entrust yeah. that task to yeah. my english educators who take up you know a separate english communicative classes uh, in the evening once we okay. are through with uh, you know the normal online classes right. so we conduct separate communicative english classes as well so we remain in touch with our students we ensure that they at least get to see our faces and the students are more than happy to interact with us and i never stop them from asking any kind of questions even yeah. if it happens to be a very very silly question i have given them a free hand i've always told them don't hold yourself back raise whatever questions whatever queries that hit your mind with your right. educators instantly so with that kind of a connect being made yeah. i don't think even this new normal would play you know a, a big role and and we have never seen this as an impediment in any of the conversation that we initiate with our you know children so this i believe is is something which you know we have to keep in mind as yeah. i said any kind of uh, you know uh, positive behavior should be treated as a form of communication but yes we also need to you know uh, come out with some specific strategies that would yeah. you know enable students to stay calm and seek support as i told you if things go wrong or if they feel you know stuck at any point of time right. so it is it is essential it is essential to retreat to social distancing norms and practice good hygiene which we have been preaching since march 2020 but then as i said that should not act as a barrier or impediment when it comes to empowering our children and focus on at least what they can control well of course things which are beyond our control we can't do anything about it of course we we just have to pray that you know things return to normalcy as soon as possible right that's wonderful sir and speaking of blended learning this uh, this term was there before you know covid but uh, suddenly you know covid made us realize that uh, it's time to change our ways so what do you think the future would look like because they, nobody knows how many waves are going uh, you know going to come and in what ways so what do you think the future holds you know today morning itself i came across an ad you know by, taken out by idea cellular network way back in 2008 Okay. wherein you know they depicted they depicted and i'm sure you know you also must have seen that ad if you're not able to recall wherein you know it was clearly depicted through that ad uh, that a certain area certain students in rural areas in particular they were struggling because of you know frequent outages of electricity and stuff like that and they had no real access to uh, quality education once they left those you know government schools say by 1 o'clock in the afternoon so right. idea came up with this you know uh, uh, you know i uh, concept of uh, ensuring that uh, through certain uh, you know uh, uh, sms facility they they used to send bullet points you know to educators so that they could conduct some sort of classes beyond the the normal school time yeah. so this this was there this was there you know 12 years ago as well it's just that people have realized its significance because of the pandemic that has been created right. so in my opinion in my opinion covid-19 has already highlighted the gaps in the education system that is you know heavily dependent on the presence of both students as well as educators in the same place at the same time yeah. but at the same time i believe that uh, you know this blended learning has has ensured more equitable access to technology as well as connectivity as well as educators also incorporating technology in their you know daily teaching learning process so in my opinion flexibility is the key to progression if yep. one adopts a flexible mindset uh, i believe blended learning is here to stay and both the students as well as educators can actually derive a lot of mileage out of it 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 all depends upon how constructively the technology is used and right. how real time it could be because students want pace along with quality content they want everything to be accessed you know at one go in real time as we say which right. is very much possible you know we are we are living in the 21st century and students have already been made aware of 21st century skills as well yeah and so as i said with with a uh, with a correct kind of collaboration uh, being established uh, i think this concept is here to stay that's wonderful sir and uh, since you spoke about you know the changing nature of uh, education more importantly uh, you know the policies the new education policy came uh, during the pandemic itself i guess uh, the last one came in the 80s late 80s I, if i'm not wrong so uh, what are your thoughts on nep i mean you can if you quickly give us an overview what do you think of it by by and large i give a thumbs up to whatever has been you know uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 suggested the policies, as yeah. per the nep yeah as per the nep uh, but you know there are limitations as well 
I am very much keen to see, and and perhaps this is one viewpoint which you might not have heard from anyone else. Why? Because see, everyone would tell you it's all about you know five plus three plus three plus four structure, which yeah. is now being advocated by NEP, and you know a lot of technology assisted learning, and you know leaving it to the to the uh, pace of students to to you know assimilate information. These are all conventional things which you would yeah. hear from anybody. my only concern is what is the government or for that matter ncrt going to do in terms of ensuring that these guidelines these broad contours which they have suggested through nep 2020 is going to be implemented both in letter and in spirit in tier 3 tier 4 cities and Correct. rural areas right. because if if that is is something which is going to yield wonderful outcomes i'm sure everyone would you know find it uh, uh, pretty easy to quickly adopt right. and implement whatever nep has suggested so as much as i am game for all these recommendations broad contours as i said suggested by nep i am still interested in knowing yeah. how is government or the policy makers including cbse yeah. you know uh, going to go about its execution both in letter Correct. and in spirit i would say earlier recommendations of nep way back in 1986 and with you know ncf that came in 2005 it had its shortcomings which nobody addressed my my concern is are are these shortcomings going to be addressed or would this also bite the dust at the end of the day so that is something which i'm very very keen to know there is a new concept called artificial intelligence and then you know robotics and design thinking which is you know assuming a lot of momentum of late again my thing is you know i was i was observing uh, i was a part of a webinar not so long ago wherein a very very renowned principal uh, from the middle east was addressing a lot of things a right. highly informative session i should say uh, yeah. it was about design thinking again my question was all that he said you know looked absolutely appropriate till grade 5 yeah beyond grade 5 if you lay a lot of emphasis on you know such project based thing or you know uh, technology assisted learning Correct. i'm still of the opinion that it would slow down the pace of the syllabus and the curriculum yeah and this is something you know which most of the educators would say and see at the end of the day it's not the principal who is going to you know create a miracle of sorts Correct. i would expect the miracle to be created from my team of educators so yeah. i would have to listen to them also so design the and you know he whatever he uh, uh, spoke uh, you know during that webinar on design thinking i i found it to be apt uh, till grade 5 with right. with a lot of technological push and stuff like that right. but you know you will be you will be you will be stunned to know that design thinking is actually introduced by cbsc in 11th and 12th okay now isn't that isn't that a contradiction of sorts whatever i happen to see even i was a novice when it came to you know understanding the abc of design thinking that's yeah. the reason why i decided to take part in that webinar i really found it to be you know quite apt for children up to the age group of 10 maximum 12 not beyond right. that right but but look at the irony cbsc has introduced it in class 11th and 12 so without any basis whatsoever yeah. you are actually trying to pull a rabbit out of the hat Correct. out of a class 11 student which yeah. leaves a lot to be desired so these are my concerns if the government along with the you know policy makers the, the decision makers could lay down some clear norms both in letter and spirit with yeah. regard to these shortcomings i think you know we we would be able to achieve uh, this feat that's i don't i don't give a thumbs yeah. down to any of the recommendations i am more interested in its practical execution yeah and ex- execution yes correct. absolutely correct wonderful wonderful sir and uh, lastly uh, uh, any message you would like to give to your students and their parents i would say see uh, th- i'm 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 very fond of this connotation dare to dream because when i was in kuwait this was the you know uh, motto of of the school that i was heading there yeah. so to students i would say you know to have dreams is of paramount significance because yeah. dreams help you build your future and give you a sense of control and hope so you know unless and until uh, students decide to go confidently in the direction of their dreams perhaps they cannot live the life that they would have imagined so i would tell my dear students to have the courage to follow your heart and intuition yeah because they somehow already know what you truly want to become and to the parents i would simply say that education is a partnership between the school you know and the parents 
with a common goal and vision that is to impart the best to our children. So in, in my opinion, uh, parents must leave no stone unturned in cultivating a lifelong passion for learning so that our young minds you know, step into a world wherein they would not be taken aback when confronted with the challenges of life. So parents should not consider education as you know, uh, scoring great marks or emerging as an IIT JEE topper or right. you know, cracking your neat exam. If your child is, is, is ready, is prepared to take on the challenges of life, I think the school and the people associated with the school would have done a wonderful job. This understanding is what I request from the side of the parents. Wonderful, sir. We uh, certainly hope that you continue to lead by example with this energy, this unmatched energy that you have. And uh, we are sure that, you know, at least the kids of DPS Patna East are in the safe hands. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. It has been my pleasure. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And I consider this to be a true pleasure that I've been able to connect with you. And uh, perhaps, you know, if this message reaches uh, you know, uh, my, my dear students, I'm sure, you know, at least they would uh, feel encouraged to follow their passion with a lot of zeal and, you know, uh, un unwindled determination because that Wonderful. can take them to heights in life. That's, that's great, sir. Thank you so much once again. And thank you to our viewers for sticking with us. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.